Hi, I'm Hector Santos, and I will be discussing today accounting for tech companies. First, let's examine the business model. If we take a look at the current business model for many tech companies today, they do not own many assets, they just own the platform. Let's examine Facebook, Uber, and Airbnb. Uber doesn't own any of their cars, Airbnb doesn't own any of the houses, and Facebook doesn't own any of the content. The basic idea is that when customers make money, then the tech company also gets a proportion of the value created. The intent is very simple. It is to enable users who need a service to come together with suppliers who have unused capacity, which benefits all parties. The sharing economy relies specifically on new sources of value creation, which the platform allows. So how does this relate to accounting? Well, if we look in the balance sheet, we think of assets on the balance sheets as physical assets like property, plant, and equipment. However, these softwares that run the platform are intangible. It's very difficult to represent these softwares in a monetary value and place it on the balance sheet. This creates misinterpretations and creates a mis-evaluation of the company. So now let's examine the assets. So do intangible software assets depreciate or enhance over time? Accounting would say that physical assets depreciate over time besides land. However, there's many studies that show that software assets actually enhance over time. Let's take this simple example. If you were to build a software today, it will create zero revenue and z add zero value to our company. However, we market it and we place, place it in where it would thrive, then in two years, it would actually create more revenue than it created in zero years. Vice, an asset like equipment, which would depreciate in two years, and it will need maintenance, which will means it will cost more to keep. So I'm a believer that software actually enhances over time, which is the opposite of what you learn for assets and accounting. Now let's talk about the income statement. So many tech companies take several years to turn a profit. If you look at their P&Ls, they always report losses. It took Twitter and Yelp several years to turn a profit. Uber still hasn't turned a profit and many other tech companies haven't turned a profit. Now, we can see that there's some generally accepted accounting principles that these high-tech firms have to follow. They have to follow SFAS2, which requires immediate expensing of R&D costs. So what do tech companies do? They research and develop and innovate. That's one of their highest costs because that's what they're doing. Their three top costs would be R&D, employee wages, and benefits. And they also have to apply to the SFAS 86 on software development costs. So two of their highest costs they have to expense immediately under GAAP. So what does this mean for earnings? Do investors still care about earnings in the bottom line? In the bottom line, when it comes to tech companies, it would appear that it's still a factor, but not as big of a factor. So, what do they care about? They care about marketing, branding, gain as much as the market space as possible, disruptive technologies, key performance indicators like monthly active users, and if there's any buy-ins or buyouts. So, why would they care about marketing? Well, marketing would say hey, they're doing what they have to do to gain a market share, to, to create those barriers of entry. Are there, is their technology disruptive? It, is it creating a new market or is it adding extra barriers to the current market? Key performance indicators like monthly active users. Is the platform actually being used as it was intended to? These are what the investors want to see, and this is how the company is evaluated. Now, what does this evaluate, evaluation means when it comes time for an initial public offering or IPO? Well, we already discussed that it's tough to gauge a monetary value on intangible assets. 
Thus, many tech companies are already evaluated. As we saw with Uber, they're high evaluation and they never turned a profit. Thus, stocks plummet a few weeks after initial public offering. We also saw that recently with Slack. So, why is this? We already discussed that they have a lot of gap principles that they have to apply to and that it's pretty much impossible to put a monetary value on these assets. So what's next? How should we fix this? Well, we should review the accounting principles so that earnings could become uh, a factor again for these tech companies. They don't have to immediately expense their R&D costs. Accountants should understand technology. Accountants cannot account for something they do not understand. That is the most important thing. You have to understand what you're accounting for because how could you value, evaluate it accurately? So now my closing remarks would be intangible assets investment are difficult to measure. As companies move to more technology-based, as technology becomes more disruptive, as we can see with cryptocurrency, with machine artificial intelligence, how would cryptocurrency be accounted for in the balance sheet? Would, they, would that be cash? Um, how would machine intelligence, artificial intelligence, like robots, be accounted for in the balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statements? All these disrupted technologies have to be understood, and these accounting practices and principles have to be changed in order to evaluate this further and accurately. This is where I find my work. Thanks you for listening. And any comments, questions, or concerns, I'm happy to hear them. Thank you so much.